Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to launch two nuclear thermopropulsion tanks to our new ship, the Flagstaff. These are hydrogen tanks. They are not like the old tanks that we have on the previous vessels, the Joplin and the St. Louis. Uh, these are drop tanks. So they have a frame around them and then the tank portion can drop out to save us some dry mass. And so increasing our delta V hopefully. Uh, so we'll take a look at that once we've got it launched and out of the fairing and they are a little bit big uh, so we have to we are using procedural fairings here they are novelty large fairings they barely fit and so that's a little bit of a rub but uh, we have to make do uh, mass wise they're a little bit lighter than the previous NTB tanks we used but same capacity I based the tank mass on the procedural tanks they're aluminum lithium tanks I averaged out the separate structure versus the um, ISO grid one and uh, got the mass like that as the correct size so so that there's no uh, discrepancy between the procedural tank numbers and the ones I'm using here and the frame is extra it's extra mass so anyway we'll see how it goes I haven't put extra radiators on it so that's another thing but I did put the MLI layers alright so all that being said unfortunately we have to launch at nighttime ignition Bottle up. and launch Normally there would be two opportunities to line up with the with any ship that we have in orbit, the Flagstaff, St. Louis, or the Joplin. However, that is if we ignore the need to get the Orion carrier plane on a trajectory to the Bahamas. As long as we put it on that trajectory, there is only one opportunity every day and so we have to do it at night otherwise we could probably launch in the day so departing Tampico so the tank is just on a docking port it's one of the propellant only docking ports and I assume it's going to be able to come out all right if we drop it but we'll have to see to put a new one in we'll need the little Canada tugs but when you think about it, we have to launch a new tank one way or another anyway, unless we're doing ISRU. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try and just refuel them. We could probably save some trouble by dropping them and then putting new ones in. Okay, well, it looks like we're heavy this time. Okay, that'll have to do. Separation. Switch. Okay, fairings. Oh, what happened to the fairings? Okay. Well, in the dark it's not great as far as trying to see the details, so I'll wait until we get into daylight before describing it. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to let the payload do the whole rendezvous on its own because uh, there's not much Delta V left here. So we're going to try that. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's just a frame and then the tank and then the propellant only docking ports are right here. And then RCS ports all around. Separation. Okay, off goes that. Well, let's get this retrograde and trying to go back home, if you will. In principle, I'm not doing the whole re-entry thing. This is sandbox mode, so I'm not concerned about anything keeping track of it. Oh, don't hit it. Okay. I've demonstrated it can come back. We'll take care of the details some other time. Okay, this thing. All it has is RCS. So, and it has no way of replenishing the electric charge on its own. So, we better do this quickly. It's behind us, 
So it's probably better if we get into a higher orbit. Our CS thrusters appear to be working. Uh, I fear that electric charge is depleting much faster than I was expecting. There is some boil off of the hydrogen. I should really remember to put hibernation modes on these things. Well, I am I'm going to go to the tracking station and time warp. Um, it's a little bit cheaty, but we'll just pretend that we put it in hibernation so I don't have to launch it again. Unless it keeps track of the electric charge, in which case this thing is probably doomed. Okay, I think that's close enough where we should probably pay attention now. Uh, well, we're still in business as far as electric charge for a little while. Okay, a 40 meter per second correction here will give us an encounter of 2 kilometers in 1 hour and 22 minutes, which should be good enough for our electric charge now that we time warped in a tracking station. Uh, but it does take a while to do this sort of burn with the RCS, so hopefully we're good enough. Three minutes? I don't know. Well, turns out that was a little bit late. We'll have to do the burn to match speeds a little bit sooner. We're still working on this one. Okay, we have our encounter. And preferably dock with it quickly, because the electric charge isn't going to hold out otherwise. I did tilt the RCS board so they wouldn't be blowing directly at the tank. It's an argument to be made that we might have wanted to avoid the RCS ports in the tank direction in the first place. However, uh, the ones that are facing outward, which would otherwise be necessary, also have to be tilted because of what we're going to be docking to which is probably another one of these assemblies with another tank, so... We can see stuff in the dark at least, it seems. It's not too bad. Okay, looking good. We do have one little tug there already, the Canada tug. Probably want two if we're going to replace the tanks though. And I really need to switch them to MH and Mon3 instead of having NTO. That little tug has NTO instead of Mon3. So it's got a few different propellant mixture and that will be complicated. I don't know if we want the tank popping off to be in view of the windows or not, but that's probably not necessary right now. So the flagstaff is going to look quite different than the ships we had before. Not only is it going to have these tanks, but I'm sort of configuring it so that it will spin for artificial gravity, which means that we'll probably want the ion thrusters to be mounted centrally in the middle, and that way they can work while it's spinning. But uh, that's different. That's going to be different. And we have to do some planning to make sure that everything is balanced properly across them, otherwise that's not going to work out right. But anyway, we've got a tank on. Let's see what this looks like in daylight. And we're gonna have more on and then, so probably a, another tank, definitely. And then the ion propulsion unit, and then more tanks, and then the nuclear engines on the opposite side. And that is the plan. So we are recharging right now. Hydrogen, it doesn't seem to be boiling off, which is interesting. It was boiling off all the way until here, so I don't know what has changed here. I mean, it had the little point oh oh, which indicates a consumption of it. I don't think we have any radiator, actually. It's just got the MLI layers on the tank. It's still, it has no heat penetration, no boil off loss, though. Okay, well anyway, that's how I would like to see it. So, here it is for now. Let's launch another one.
Okay, so same idea, but I've added solar panels to it this time, so we don't have to worry about the electric charge. So SAS on, throttle is up, and I'll aim camera at that just for aesthetic purposes. And unfortunately at night again, but we'll have to wait a few months before we get a daytime launch to our uh, ships. Basically, how many months? Maybe four months. So that's just how it is. All right, ignition. And launch. We certainly have much more than four months until the actual Mars transfer window, so we will be doing some launches in daylight for this sortie or campaign or convoy or whatever you want to call it. Mars convoy? Hmm. Okay, engine shut down and roll. You seem lower than last time. It's a little bit unusual. Oh, okay, okay, I went too far there. Still in theory enough for this, but... Okay. It is behind us, so we'll probably want to be in a higher orbit. But it's not too far behind us, so we should be able to catch up pretty quickly. Or let it catch up to us pretty quickly. Alright, we are in orbit. A uh, lower orbit than probably would be best as far as the rendezvous is concerned, so we'll have the payload boosted up. I guess we have a little bit of extra in here to try and help a little, uh, help slightly. Okay, maybe that'll help. Alright. Well, that's basically what I want to have happen. And... Again, I'm not going to waste time on this, but we can demonstrate that it can get into a suborbital situation pretty easily. Alright, very suborbital. Alright, so this is in orbit. And there's no RCS on the actual hydrogen tank. It's only on the frame. And Flagstaff is behind us. We need to target again. We always lose the target because of the way everything is put together in the VAB with, you know, everything being put onto the Orion carrier plane instead of being the route. Well, an encounter right there would be nice. Not that fast, though. Hmm. We still only have the RCS. We don't want it to go that fast. So let's wait a little bit. There we are. Okay, we have an encounter within an orbit and a relative speed of 12.7 there. So we're just going to go around and meet up with the flagstaff. Well, if we take away the HUD, this is what it looks like as we approach. This really is zero. I mean, uh, seems like it should be rotated more. It should be matching the top of the other one. I guess we need to be 180 degrees. Okay, another 40 tons on arrival here. And after this, we'll uh, check up on the series uh, ISRU probe. I think we can time warp the 58 days. That'll certainly get us closer to when we can launch in daylight for these missions. The RCS ports, I, I made sure that they would be clear here, but they are close. Okay, it is connected. And yeah, they are clear of each other among the considerations. And this is what it looks like. 142 tons. It doesn't have the engines to use the hydrogen just yet. We'll have to add those on. But again, they'll be on the other end. The radiators will also be with the nuclear engines because that'll help counterbalance the mass of the main hab. Still, because the food, water, and oxygen is going to deplete over time, 
it's tricky. And we'll probably have to shift some fuel around or some other stuff. Maybe we'll shift, uh, have a water tank on the opposite side. Water is really heavy and dense, so it'll be easy to like shift water out to the other side to maintain the balance in the center mass where the ion engines are going to be. That'll probably be the best idea. And, you know, water is generally safe to move around. Anyway, that will be a consideration for later, but this is what this looks like right now. And let's take a look at the series ISRU probe, so I'll time warp in the tracking station. Okay, this ISRU unit is just doing a mid-course adjustment, but we'll be seeing whether it's got boil-off losses or stuff like that, so it is important. Okay, we will be using the ion engine, and it's only 3 meters per second. Uh, but it looks like we have no oxygen. So this is the peculiarity we've been facing here. Uh, that the oxygen boil-off has been higher than the hydrogen boil-off. That's been pretty consistent, and I don't understand why. <laughs> um, uh, I do not understand why the oxygen has all boiled off and the hydrogen is still half there, basically. I mean, I would like more hydrogen, but uh, it's strange. It's just strange. Well, it certainly means that we should just use hydrogen, because if we can't trust the oxygen to stick around, I don't know, maybe there's some thermodynamic logic to it, but I can't imagine why, because the oxygen tanks are physically smaller, right? It's more, it's denser, it's less surface area, so it's going to have less heat, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Um, right now, there's no heat penetration, apparently. The MLI layers are just fine for it right now. Uh, tell me in the comments if you think that there is a justification for this, or whether it's just an error that maybe we should just put some oxygen in. Uh, I don't. We can't make a landing on series with no oxygen. Uh, we do. Well, I do have the ore. I could convert that to oxygen. So this, there's an ISRU unit, and we accidentally launched with ore. So we have the ore. So maybe we could use that. But anyway, at least Arizona and NTO doesn't boil off. We can use that to... Actually, we should just use that to do the maneuver, probably. So right now, we wouldn't have enough to make orbit around Ceres. And the Delta V we have there is, you know, ion engine Delta V. One day, 12 hours it would take. But, you know, that's doable. But it's probably going to take more Delta V than just that 5,800 if we have to start something like a day early. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, oh, no, 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 stop. Okay, well, just, just stop, stop, stop. Well, that's got to be really sensitive. Okay, RCS off. That's okay, I think. So, if we check it out now, that's still 5,800. Now, if we have the oxygen there and maybe convert some of the ore to hydrogen and oxygen, either way, uh, we might be able to make a landing. I'm certainly not going to convert it right now because it'll just boil off, I guess. Uh, I mean, it says there's no boil off, right? Um, hot bath. Can, no, that's the reactor anyway. RF boil off says it doesn't say anything about that right now, but I don't trust it. So, got the huge radiator. Anyway, you can tell me what you think, uh, whether we should sneak some oxygen in, or we can see how much the ore would produce. I forget exactly what the conversion rate is, but we'll see that when we get to series. So, I'm going to add an SOI change alarm. And... That might be not soon enough, let's see. That's only three hours ahead of periapsis. That's not gonna be enough time to do the ion engine burn. So, SOI change alarm with a 24 hour buffer. Okay, so 
this is continuing on its way and hopefully we can get it there we'll see but these I, uh, isru units are tricky and then we also have the probe of course this is useless without the probe that will scan for resources and we'll see about that in the future but the next thing we need to do will be a mid-course adjustment for a jupiter probe that's in 140 days it's probably one that's supposed to get into orbit around Ganymede, I think, because we've got the Callisto one here. Anyway, so for now, we will leave it here, and we will continue with further launches, building up our ships until the next activity in the alarm clock. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.